can you all hear and see me okay give me a, a thumbs up or a yes anything like that <laughs> sorry i've got the chat off to the side so i can kind of see um what you guys are chatting and any questions and stuff but just double checking that everything works okay and you can all hear me i hope so <laughs> fingers crossed it's all working um so welcome to the crafternoon i am so excited to do this for you guys today um obviously this isn't going to be uh, an asmr stream um, we do want to keep things like quite chilled and stuff um but yeah a sort of general um yeah no sort of loud noises hopefully um you might hear my little boy downstairs um in a little bit because he is a toddler and they like to run around and do that sort of thing um but apart from that we're gonna have a nice chilled out afternoon so here I've got um, the start of my Easter wreath, um, summer wreath, whatever you want to call it. Um, so some of you guys will have seen on the social media pages that I post on uh, about the materials and stuff you'll need for today's crafts. Um, if you didn't manage to get them in time, I almost didn't. Um, no worries, you can just sort of chill out, uh, sit back at home and just watch me make a bit of a mess really. Um, so yeah, first of all, um, I've got my little spring wreath here. So for those of you at home who've never made a, a natural or a homemade wreath before, it's really, really easy. So first of all, you're gonna need a ring, just like this. Um, you can use a wire coat hanger or any sort of like sturdy wire. Um, this is from an old wreath that I made years and years ago. Um, but yeah, something that's good and sturdy that will hold all your materials on together. Um, or if you're really savvy, you can actually weave some out of some sort of twigs. So that's what I was doing yesterday. I was just starting my base for this. So you'll notice that it's all sort of fresh greenery. And um, with this one, because it is a fresh one, it'll probably last about a week, week and a half, two weeks at the max. And they'll just sort of dry out naturally. Um, if you've got an artificial one, even better, because you can keep taking it out year after year. So I've got a couple of bits here to decorate our little wreath with. So I've got some adorable little sunflowers there. They're like little paper ones. Uh, most of the stuff I'm using today, I actually got from Hobbycraft. Um, so if you're in the US or places where you don't really have a hobby craft, I believe America's got a Hobby Lobby, is it? Stuff like that. Um, you could probably get similar stuff like this from there. Um, but yeah, I just thought sunflowers are really like, they just remind me of like spring and summer. So I thought that would be perfect to put on our little wreath. And I did happen to pick up some little plasticky eggs, like Easter-y eggs. So I'll just pop those back in there. And then I did happen to have some of these left over from my Christmas and Yule wreaths. And these are just natural pine cones that I've just found out and about that have just sort of sat in a box really and, and dried so um, yes that's pretty much those but obviously you can add whatever decoration you want to add to your wreath um, so I'm just going to say a quick hello to anybody who's just joined us hello hello how's everybody doing good okay so if you've already got the base of your wreath um, that's fantastic if not, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes just to um, start to weave yours together and put it together. So here, let's just pick these up. I've got some spare little branches and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep adding to my wreath for a minute or so just so you guys can kind of catch up because I am a wee bit ahead of you. So let's just add some more here and you guys can kind of talk amongst yourselves. That's absolutely fine. So just give you a little that one's a little bit loose but I'll have to tie that one later and for mine I'm just using we can't even see it it's so thin just really like thin string so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use the string for the minute I'm just gonna weave these let's make sure I get to the front part first so I'm just gonna weave these in and out of my structure and if you're following along at home this can be like the fiddly part, so you just got to be patient. It also depends upon how like bendy and flexible your bits of greenery are. But 
once you get a few kind of weaved in then it's a lot easier and if you feel like your wreath is not stable enough once they have been threaded through you can always grab a piece of your like wire or twine whatever you want to call it and just sort of tie it round just to keep it a bit more together and in place which I've done in several areas but because it's so thin you can't actually see it which is magic so I'm just going to grab some more greenery and stick that in there so it is really warm in here today <laughs> I've got the window open and it's like super sunny here in the UK so I hope it's nice wherever you guys are watching from. Um, so I definitely picked a good afternoon for it um, but it is really warm in here because we've got like cameras and microphones and all sorts of equipment just heating up the room so a little bit warm but that's absolutely fine. <laughs> Hello Megan! <laughs> So I've just seen some more people join the chat. Hope everybody's doing okay. I am great, just very, very warm. So let's see, let's just add a few more in here, just like that. So once this is complete, I'm actually gonna hang this on my front door, I think, um, just for a bit of, you know, positivity, which is what we all need now. We need, we need things that are nice and pretty and positive right now so definitely PMA vibes okay okay let's just pop that in there so if you guys have any uh, questions to do with the craft that um, I'll be making at the time if you're at home and you're struggling with it a bit that's absolutely fine just ask some questions I've got the chat up on a lovely big box there so I can see your questions um, anything to do with like the channel or a commission piece or artwork um, you can put in the comment section or you could email me um, at the email address in the description box that's absolutely fine um, I will try my best to answer your questions <laughs> as they come in but I will obviously be distracted with um, making stuff so something I would love to see is if you guys are following along at home and you do end up making some of these please 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 send me your pictures of your makes I love to see other people making things um, especially stuff that I've made on videos it's it's really nice to see and I'm all for creativity so you don't have to be an artist you know you don't have to be a professional it's all about being relaxed and having a bit of fun at the same time so okay so I'm just going to build this up a little bit more and then what I'll do in a few minutes is I will start to heat up my my glue gun which is actually German so I had to get a plug adapter for it which was quite funny I did not realize when I ordered it from Amazon that it was a German glue gun so it has traveled <laughs> But it's super cute. Let's have a little look. So, I don't know if you can see it. It's got some really cute flowers on. It's like super girly. And it's also a mini one because I don't have the biggest hands in the world. So, <laughs> it's good for all sorts. And very compact if I have to travel anywhere. Because, you know, you can do crafts anywhere. So. What do we think? Do we think it needs a little bit more? I might put a bit of string around that bit because when I lift it up, this bit here is a bit having a bit of a fun on its own. So, okay, let's just put that around there like that. There we go. Okay, tie that little bit there. Okay, so that's going to be like the base of our little our little wreath, because I think that's that's good enough for me. I'll just pop these bits out to the side. Okay, so at this stage, um, if you are ready to glue your decorations or attach them, um, obviously you can use um, super glue. Um, I wouldn't use PVA for this unless they're really light decorations. So like these ones. Even though they are plastic, they are actually hollow. 
so they're very lightweight so I could probably stick those on with PVA but today I'm using good old-fashioned glue gun to make sure that they actually stay um, because here where I live it's quite windy and breezy so if this is going to be you know blowing around on my front door I don't want my decorations to fall off um, whereas with these babies here you can use obviously the wire to tie them around your wreath which is what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna do my flowers first and then I'll get on to gluing those so I tell you what I'm gonna set up my little glue gun just so it can start to heat up and we'll stick one of you in there like that so it's all ready to go I'm just gonna plug you in so grab my little plug Cables everywhere at this point. Okay, so I'm just leave that in there like that for a minute. Okie dokie, so I'm going to give that a few minutes to do its thing. Okay, so we can put our little flowers on here. So again, just using the wire, I'm just going to pop him through there like that. And then use the wire itself to attach it in. Obviously, you could put glue on these as well if you wanted, just to give it an extra bit of stability, but that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to try and spread these out as much as possible. They are so cute. You could make little hair things with these. So again, push that through there like that. Make sure it's up against there, and then I'm just gonna wiggle it in there. Okay, so as I said before, this is a bit of a fiddly craft. Um, everywhere at this point. But once it's all put together, you'll love it, I promise. It'll be really, really nice. So, there we go. So we've got one of these. Again, just pop it through. And you can actually use these to secure the weak points. There we go. Okay, so you can see I've got a few little ones on there at the moment. Let's see, so I've got three left at the moment. Okay. And again, I'm going to actually move that one over a little bit more because it needs to be spaced out. So we've got two more left. I think I might just put this one here. So, how has everybody's start to the weekend gone? I hope you're all having a lot of fun and enjoying the sunshine, but obviously staying close to home. I've been spending a lot of time in the garden. Hi, Nat. I've just seen you come in the chat. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. <laughs> so I'll just pop another one in there like that. And at this stage, you can leave it like that. You can add more flowers. That's quite cute as is really, isn't it? But I'm just gonna get rid of that loose little bit there. Okay. That in there. So now I'm going to pick out some of my coloured little eggs to stick on here as well. Now, you guys know I'm not really much of a pink girl, but um, I'll probably use the rest of these um, ones. I mean, I may use these in future for something else, I don't know. Um, but I think I'm just going to stick to my four colours. So I've got my yellow, my purple, my blue and my green. So. What I'm going to do is um, when I make wreaths and I've said this before on numerous videos what I like to do is the rule of three so if I'm putting pockets of decoration around a wreath it's visually more attractive if you do things in threes 
So what I'll do, for example, just to explain a bit better, is I'll take three of my eggs and then I will sort of pop them on my wreath like that. And then, so I'm not gonna glue them, I'm just gonna stick them down for an example. So then about sort of a quarter of the way around my wreath, I'm gonna get another three eggs. Oh, tried to escape. And we'll just put those just there. And then again, the next three, put in that kind of corner there. So you've got kind of like a triangle effect going on. Um, so I do this with my uh, Christmas, like my bauble wreaths. I always do them in pockets of three. I usually do like a little one and then two bigger ones, um, or two little ones and a big one. Um, but it just, I find it looks more visually appealing. Um, obviously it's your wreath and it's completely up to you how and where you want to put your decorations, but that's just my little tip um, from me to you. So I'm just going to check on my glue gun, see if it's heated up and we can get started on gluing our decorations. So he's not heating up as quickly as I would like in that case because these are very lightweight. As if by magic I have some craft glue. So I'm going to glue these suckers to my beautiful wreath. So always remember when you've got your eggs, um, you can sort of glue it at the bottom and stick them up that way. I like to do them sideways. So what I'll do is I'll take one and I will just paint the side of it like that quite liberally you want to make sure that they do actually stick okay don't be afraid don't be afraid to use a lot of glue for this okay and then I'm going to stick my first one I think here where I suggested before so just give it a little push on and then move on to our next one. So good old purple. These actually do look like mini eggs. So I was very tempted to eat them earlier and then realise they were actually plastic. So <laughs> don't do that. Okay, so just again, putting a whole bunch of craft glue on that side. And then we'll just nestle it in there next to its little buddy. And then I think, let's see, should we go with green or blue for the next one? Well, green does go with yellow and purple. So let's go for green, shall we? Okay, so again, you know the drill by now. Let's just pop some glue on that one. Whoopsie daisy, it's trying to escape. And then we'll just Again, nestle you in with your friends there. And I'm just going to stick a little bit of glue. Because it's a PVA glue, it will dry clear. So it doesn't matter too much that I'm getting it on the actual leaves. Let's just stick that in there like that. There we go. So I'm just going to gently lift up and you can kind of see them nestled in there. Okay. My table is absolutely covered in leaves, so I'm going to have to clean that off before the next craft. But we'll carry on. So I haven't used a blue yet, so I will take my blue egg, just pop a bit of glue on there, and then again working in our quarters. So I've got a sunflower just here, so I'm going to do it a little bit below that. Stick you on there like that. Okay. Okie dokie. So let's see. We've got a nice yellow one here. I may end up having to put pink on this, I think, just to break up all the different colours, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. Today is a free craft day, so there are no mistakes. As Bob Ross says, there are just happy little accidents. So it does not matter. As long as we're having fun, eh? So let's just pop that one in there like that. And then I'm going to go for another green one, I think. Okay. There we are. Okay. 
I'm going to warn you now, you're going to get very messy this afternoon if you're following along with me. <laughs> I'm a very messy crafter, I can't help it. Um, there we go, okay. So I'll just lift that up gently so you can see again. Okay, so it's really starting to come together. And with PVA glue, I would leave it to dry for at least a couple of hours, really ideally overnight. Um, just in sort of a cool dry place and then it will all be ready for you in the morning. Um, if you are putting your wreath outside um, I would suggest putting either PVA or Mud Podge or something just over the top of your decorations to seal them in otherwise for example the uh, paper flowers can sometimes get a bit soggy and not very nice and then your wreath will start to sort of deteriorate so always make sure that you have either um, something to cover them with or the plastic eggs I've got will be absolutely fine because they are plastic um, but if you want to just cover your flowers in PVA and then let that dry which is what I'm going to do just briefly while I wait for my eggs to dry I'm just going to pop some on it and again like I say um, PVA will dry clear so don't be afraid um, to put a good thick layer on. Okay, so there we go. Making sure I just do the back ones as well. Okay. There we are, fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to do my last set of eggs at the back here. So I think we're going to go with we're going to do maybe double purple and a blue. So let's do our first egg. Stick you on there. Okay. And the blue one. Just nestle you in there. And then my other purple one. I don't know if you can hear, I've got um, a family of like doves outside in our garden tree and they're just constantly making noise so I do apologise if um, they're being extra noisy but okay, just stick those together a little bit more. So lastly i'm just going to put a couple of these um natural pine cones on just to give it a more like rustic natural look um obviously you could add ribbons um glitter all sorts of fancy things and this is a really fun project to do if um, you've got an afternoon free or um it's a good project to do with your kids my little boy is a little bit young at the moment, he's not even two, so um, I probably would not trust him with the PVA glue, if I'm honest, <laughs> but when he's older, definitely. So, okay, again, being really thick with the PVA glue. And then this is when you want to put um, your extra decorations in the gaps that you've created. So I'm going to put mine in between my eggs and my sunflowers, just like that. Okay, so let's stick you just over there, like that, there we go. And it's a nice one. So I know not everybody is lucky enough to have um, like natural resources that they can grab. Um, I know that uh, Hobbycraft and Amazon and Etsy are really good for picking up um, natural craft items if you'd rather go down the natural route than buy obviously plastic ones but that's absolutely fine. Um, obviously I know that retailers at the moment are um, having a bit of difficulty with deliveries and such um, so you just have to give them a little bit of extra time. but. As far as I know, they are in stock at the moment online, so if you want to grab some natural pine cones or anything like that, they're pretty easy to get hold of um, if you don't have a forest or 
you know, lots of trees where you live. So, I think this might be the last one. So let's just pop on some glue there. It's, ooh, there we go. And you can go in this little gap here, I think. Just there like that. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to pop it off to one side to do its thing and dry completely. And then what, um, what I'll do once it's dry, I will attach some ribbon to it, um, probably later on uh, this evening or tomorrow morning. Um, all the crafts today, um, if you don't happen to see them very well up close, obviously I will show you what I'm doing. Um, but if you want to get a better detail of what they look like at the end, I will be taking pictures of all the crafts I do today and I'll be popping them up on um, sort of Facebook, here, um, Instagram, all that good stuff um, so you guys can see the crafts for yourself. And also if you want to obviously watch this back at a later date to see how I did them, then this will be available on YouTube to watch as a regular video after the stream. So there's no worries if obviously you've missed part of the stream or, or a step or anything like that, that's absolutely fine. So let me just, whoops a daisy, let's just stick you back on there. There we go, he just ran away a little bit. So that's what we've got so far. Whoops a daisy, Mr Egg keeps falling off, let's stick you back on there. There we go. Okay. So that's all done for now, so I'm just going to stick it to one side obviously because it does need to stay, it does need to be sort of dried because obviously those eggs are not going to stay otherwise. So let's just carefully pop you to the side, just over there. Okay, so you'll see my table is absolutely covered in leaves and all sorts at the moment, but I do have a lot of eggs left over for uh, another craft which would be really good because I'm sure there's lots of Easter stuff I can probably make with those. So what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to have a little tidy up and then we can get on to our next little craft. So let's just clear the table a little bit and I forgot to drink my coffee, that's terrible. Oh, that's brilliant, right. So let's have a little clear up. I'll just put these glue sticks away because I'm not going to need those for the time being. So you'll see I do have a menagerie of art stuff behind me. Um, most of it is for today, but I've also got my art box and Toothless is here for moral support. <laughs> so, everybody wave to Toothless. <laughs> okay, so let's just sweep all those off the side here into my bin. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm not going to need this for a little while. So I'll just pop you behind there. We'll keep our craft glue just in case I need it again. Pop those there. And just pop my string to one side. Okay. Wow, it is so warm. It's warm but very lovely. I just wish there was a, a breeze through here. So, if you were making that wreath at home, I hope you're super happy with what you've made so far. I know I am. And I can't wait to take pictures of that later. But for now, we're going to move on to our next craft. So, for the next craft, we're going to be making pom poms. So, I've got two different sorts here. So, this is your sort of stereotypical little round fluffy pom-pom there we go and then this guy is a bit more like a tassel pom-pom so he's a lot more longer he looks kind of like a i don't know like a little furry creature <laughs> so you've got your two sorts there like that and i'm going to show you how to make um, each of those so i'll just pop you guys to the side for a minute so first of all you're going to need some wool or yarn something you know nice and fluffy to make um today i'm using the party time chunky now uh, this was the only color i could get available at the time um 
because unfortunately Hobbycraft had sold out of all the other colours because yeah. typical me, I wanted purple and pink. So <laughs> I wanted the purple blend, but this one is just as nice. So let's just grab our bits and bobs. Okay. So for making pom-poms, and if you guys are doing this at home, uh, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need two circles of cardboard. So I'll show you the templates that I've got. You're basically going to be making these. Okay? Can you see that okay? Yeah. So what you'll need to do is cut out two circles of card. And I hope you guys can see this okay on the screen. And basically you're going to want to create two circles. So you want your outer circle and then you want your inner circle and that's going to be your hole and then you're going to need a line and this is where you're going to cut so I hope that makes sense you're basically making a C shape effectively but you need your two bits of C shape card to be identical so I hope that makes sense okay everybody following along so you've got your two bits of card so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, let's have a little look yeah, I'm going to cut out this one just so you guys can see. Um, so obviously I've cut that one out and then we will cut along our line. Okay, like so. So you've got your cut there and then you're going to cut into your circle. And depending on how big your inner circle is will determine how fat or chunky your uh, pom-pom is going to be. Let's just cut around there, like so. I'm just going to lean it up a little bit. Okay. There we go. So then, obviously, you've got the circle with your hole cut, and then you're just going to cut a little wedge out of it. So, like a slice of cake. A very small slice of cake. Okay. So, just like that. And then you've got your C. Okay. So if you guys have got those, we're all ready to go. So what we're going to do is we'll put our two bits of card together so they become one. And then you're going to need to grab your wool. And this is the bit that's going to be a bit time consuming. So I apologise now if this bit's a little bit boring. Um, but what you're going to essentially do is, it's a little bit fiddly, you're going to hold your C shape. And then you are going to start to wrap your wool around your C shape. So you're just going all the way around. And depending on how many times you go over your wool will determine how thick and fluffy your uh, pom pom is, basically. So we're just going to do that. So this is really cool to do if you've got like a wool like mine that changes colours. <laughs> Um, also, if you've got like a glitter wool, that's really fun to use um, because obviously they all give different effects. But so I don't know if you can see there, that's kind of where I'm going. Okay, I'm just leaving a little bit of a gap towards the end so that my wool doesn't fall off the end. And you want to be quite tight when you're wrapping it so that when you come to cut it later, which I will show you in a minute, um, it won't all fall off your cardboard. So. Obviously, if you've got a pom-pom maker at home, it probably makes things a lot easier. But if you've got a piece of card to hand and some spare wool or some string, then this is the cheap and easy way to do it. So, um, there's also the fork method, um, which I've heard about, but I've not actually tried myself. So that might be something for a future video that I might try. But yeah, so now I'm coming into my yellow, which is really cool. So. Let's just keep wrapping you around. And then what I like to do is, now I've got a different colour, I like to go back over my colour so you get like a nice stripy thread effect. Just mix up those colours a little bit. So, grab my wool a little bit more. If you guys need a break, just you know, pause the video, and when you come back to live, obviously, um, you can just watch it as um, a normal video up until the live point. But 
do apologise this bit's a bit boring because it's just me wrapping more around <laughs> I'm afraid so okay so now I'm coming to my yellow so you can see how that's kind of building up very nicely okay so I'll just keep going it's actually been a long time since I made pom-poms I made these a few Christmases ago but I don't really make them that often. Normally I do sort of uh, paper ones. Okay, so again, I'm just going back over. And now I'm coming to my green segment. I'm going to try and layer some green in there as well. Okay. Okay. Oh, almost there, guys, promise. <laughs> this is the trouble with live. You can't cut and edit to speed things up so okay I'm just going to do a few more turns and obviously straighten out my cardboard a little bit but I've got enough wool here to probably make at least 50 pom-poms that's crazy <laughs> um, they're also really nice cheap and easy decorations if you're having a party or um, anything like that and you think, oh no, I've got nothing to, you know, hang up. You can make a couple of, a few of these and obviously make your templates a lot bigger. You could make massive pom-poms. That would be quite fun. Um, I imagine if you've got cats and you made pom-poms that big, they would end up being a play toy for them. <laughs> I don't know. I'd, I don't own cats, but I could just imagine it. Okay. So I think that's quite... Mine's quite chunky looking now. Looks a bit like one of those um, sea creatures. I don't know if, oh, I can't remember the name of them, but they've got like the little stripes around them. Some sort of crustacean, I think. I don't know. But. Okay. Here we go. Okay. And just a few more in the blue thread. Right, so. Now I'm happy that he's quite chunkified. Just gonna snip that off the end there. So this part now is where it gets very fiddly and you have to make sure that you're holding your wool or your yarn like close to your template, otherwise it will come off. So you're gonna need a very sharp pair of scissors, which these are not. So I'm going to switch to my little scissors. So now for this part, you're going to simply cut, not going into your cardboard, but just cut your wool so that it opens up, okay? So just along the ridge there, making sure you don't cut into your cardboard, just cut along the ridge there. And again, this is going to be fiddly, I apologise. Um, okay, so let's just... Try and get into there like that. Obviously, if you've got a pen okay. maker at home, so it makes things a lot easier. But let's just if you've got a piece of card cut to there like that. This may take a little bit of elbow grease because it is quite thick. Okay. So you can see I've started in there like that. Okay. So let's just keep going. And you're going to want to make sure that you're holding on to the inner the inner part here so that your the wool does not come off it's very tricky i know but i promise it's worth it okay so there's a couple of loose threads in there there we go you're going to want to make sure that you cut it really um all the way through so that then you can see your little template can you see that don't know if you can see that in there yep so you've got your template in there so okay it's like a little taco at the moment <laughs> okay and to keep going okay just making sure i've got all of them there's a couple of loose ones 
And it doesn't matter too much at this stage if it's neat or not because um, once it comes together and you've tied it all, we can just give him a little haircut and he will be good as new. So let's just hold that like that. Making sure that I'm keeping all my wool in my template. So I'm just adjusting there. I can already see all the different colors coming through, which is really cool. That's super awesome. So let's just cut through there. Okay. okay, and then I've got to just make it through the yellow. Okay, I'm nearly at the end now. I can already see there's one and two and three. Okay, okay so I'm just going to cut through my last little ones just towards the end here. Perfect. So let's just get rid of that little guy because that was the long bit that I didn't need. So once you've got this, you're then going to need a piece of your wool and do longer than you need just in case, you can always cut it down later. So this is where it becomes really tricky. So holding your wool onto your template, you're going to want to, so that's the opening there, you're going to want to put your string or whatever it is that you're using to tie your pom-pom with in between that gap. So where your two cardboard pieces meet, you're going to want to gently slide a piece of string or whatever you're using to secure your pom-pom with. And then just holding it together, bring it all the way up so it's like a little purse. <laughs> and then tie it really, really tight tight as you can without obviously breaking your yarn or whatever it is you're working with and then I would do it three times just for good measure so one two three okay and this is now the stage where obviously it's looking a little bit rough but that's fine and you're going to want to then take out your cardboard inserts and it should be that easy just Gently wiggle them out, like so. Okay, so there you've got your basic pom-pom. Now, he's looking a little bit rough around the edges, so I'm just gonna trim him up a little bit, give him a mini haircut, and he will be good to go. So, let's just give you a little bit of a nice little haircut, little mister. So, there we go. Okay. There we go. It's like cutting doll's hair a little bit. Uh, there's a few little longer bits there because I'm a bit of a perfectionist <laughs> I like to make him super neat but... okay got a little bit of fluff on there there we go just ruffle him up a little bit and there you have one pom-pom <laughs> that's super fluffy and he's molting <laughs> there we go. So, one adorable little pom pom. Okay, so that's probably my favourite out of all the methods. So, the second method I'll show you in a minute is just actually using your own hand, or you can use a fork, I believe, for this method, but I prefer just to use my hand. Um, so, I'm just going to do a quick clean up. Okay, so just get all our fluffy bits together. How is everybody doing in the chat? Are we all good? Yeah? Yeah, good. I think I'm going to have a drink because it's rather warm today still. Hello, just seen some more people join the chat. How are we all doing? Are we all good? We've just been making our little pom-poms. So, okay, so that's that one there. I'm just going to clear the table and then I'll show you the 
second method for doing a pom pom. So this is going to going to be your I want to call it a sea urchin, like your sea urchin kind of pom pom. He's a little bit longer and floppy <laughs> compared to your little puffball. So again, get your wool. And, oh, I've got a little loose bit there. There we go. So what you're going to do is you're going to have your hand and then you're just going to, so I'm going to have it facing me and you're going to wrap your wool around and it's going to go through your little finger there like that. Okay. So I'll do that again. So it just goes around the back and in your little finger like that. Okay. So that basically just secures your, your wool in place. Okay. So then you're basically going to do the same thing that you were doing around your C shape. We're going to do just as many times as you like around your hand. Now, a little bit of advice, do not do this one too tight because one, you will cut off the circulation to your poor hand and two, you're going to need it a little bit loose uh, to put your other string through later. So what we'll do is, I'll just make sure I've got a lot of slack on that. Looks like this one's going to be a blue green one. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap it around my hand quite a few times and I want it quite thick. So I'm just going to wrap it around a few times like that. Okay. There we are. And again. So now I'm coming into the green segment, which is what I wanted. I wanted to make it a two tone one, so let's just. Add a little bit of green in, okay, just like that. Looks like a little cocoon, doesn't it? So, once you're happy with however many layers or however thick you want your pom pom, what you're going to then do is you're going to cut your wool, and you're going to need a second piece or a piece of ribbon, whatever you want to use for this. It's absolutely fine just to secure it. So you'll want a piece of ribbon like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to um, basically pop, it doesn't matter which end you do it, but you're going to pop your uh, piece of wool through this. So you're going to need to be able to have a little bit of slack in there so that you can gently feed this through. So I'm just going to go, I think I'm going to go top ways. It's basically, if I can grab him like that, there we go, so, yep, that's the bit I needed, okay, so it should do that, okay, and then what you're going to do is, very gently, just slide your cocoon off, okay, and then you're going to tie it. Okay, so let's just tie that up, make sure it's really tight again, okay, just like so, and again, I would always do it in three, just to make sure, okay, again, like that, I'm just going to cut that excess off a second, there we go, so, it does look a little bit funny, a little bit poofy at the moment. So then make sure your two pieces that you're going to, you've tied it with are out of the way. And then I'm literally just going to cut straight through it. So, okay, just like that. Okay, so he's a little bit long at the moment. And this is where we give him his little haircut. So. So you can see he's a little bit long and a little bit long and floppy. So I'm just gonna gather it together like that, and then I'm gonna use my little scissors because they are sharper, and then just cut straight through like that. Again, just give you a little haircut, mate. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I am not a hairdresser, <laughs> as you can tell. Okay, it's a little bit fluffy. Let's just get some of those ends. And what you can do is, because he's all one length at the moment, you can always cut the 
top layer a little bit shorter, so it's a bit more like a layered pom-pom. Um, so this is more like a tassel kind of pom-pom, I guess. But it's just fun to weft and wiggle around. So um, yeah, those are your two types of pom-poms. So a little bit fiddly, but really fun to do. And I definitely can imagine these being cat toys somewhere. <laughs> so let's just uh, pop those to one side. Oh, they're so fluffy. They're so nice and fluffy. And I've got loads of wool here, so who knows? I may end up taking up knitting. I did try uh, doing crochet for a while and I was not very successful. I was all fingers and thumbs, so... I think I might just stick to drawing and uh, photography <laughs> for now, but oh, it's like little tribbles. <laughs> uh, so let's just pop you guys to one side and I'll just pop the wool back here. And again, we'll have our little tidy up. So there's fluff everywhere. So I'm actually gonna keep my little templates for future pom-pom making. Um, if you guys really enjoy uh, these particular crafts today, um, but you'd like to see it in a bit more um, in-depth, step-by-step guide, um, please pop in the comments section below uh, which ones you'd like to see more in-depth, and I will make a little, a proper video on them for you. That's absolutely no trouble at all. I know sometimes it's a bit hard to keep up when things are, are uh, alive or going quite quickly. So I am now covered in fluff. <laughs> so let's just pop you guys to one side. Okay, so if you guys are okay, I am just going to take a, like a minute break. Um, I'm just gonna go refill my water a second, so. I will not be long, I'm not disappearing, I'm literally going for a minute, okay? So when I come back, um, we will start prepping for our third craft. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. We've been going about an hour now. Um, let's have a little look. Yeah, we've been going about an hour now and I'm already on to craft three. So I don't know how long the stream's gonna be. I imagine we're gonna be going for at least another hour. Um, but. Who knows, we're just winging it today. It's a nice, easy and breezy free day. So I will be right back. See you guys in a minute, okay? Okay, so you're still with me? Yeah, good. Okay, um, so it looks like the stream is a little bit behind. Um, I've just detected some latency issues, so I apologize for that if everything's coming to you guys a little bit slower than normal. There's not a lot I can do about it, unfortunately. Um, but as I said, um, I will be posting this to uh, YouTube, hopefully. Um, just as a standalone video if all goes well. So you'll be able to watch it back at a pace that suits you guys. So I'm just gonna prep for our next craft and that's going to be mosaic. So I don't know if you can see these here. These are basically little beads that again I got from Hobbycraft and these are the ocean set. 
So, um, yeah, if you guys obviously saw the post on um, here and on Facebook uh, with the list of materials you'll need for this, um, I did say that you would need um, some bits for mosaic making. So you could use um, broken up tile, you could use glass, although if you're using glass, please, please wear gloves, safety first. Um, but I just really like using these pretty little gems. So I'm going to use those today. And in here, I've got some dry plaster. So what I'll do is I'll mix some water with that when I need to use it because once you put water with this, it then starts to obviously turn hard really quickly. So be very careful with that for the minute. And then I've also got some foam polyfiller. I know it sounds really random, but this will be good for putting like a grout in between all the beads and stuff. Um, I might not end up using it, but it's good as a backup. So it looks like frosting. In fact, I'm pretty sure if you stuck that on top of a fake cupcake, people would probably think it is frosting. So don't eat polyfiller. Uh, not sponsored, by the way. Okay, and then here, I don't know if you guys can see, I did start drawing an outline, it's not very clear. So what I'll do is I will um, just go over it in a white pencil for the minute. But this is a piece of just old wood that I found in the garden. And obviously this is gonna be, what I'm gonna put my mosaic onto. You can use um, like a whole tile. You could use, um, like I'm using a piece of wood. You can even do it on canvas. It's completely up to you. But I am using this because this is gonna go in my garden. So I am specifically making a mosaic for my garden. So I'm just gonna pop you down there. And then somewhere in here I've got a little white Yep, okay. So I'm just going to go over my design a little bit. Okay. So obviously, you guys can create whatever design you want. Um, today is just about being creative and having some fun. So that's totally fine. Um, but for this, I actually had a concept in mind. So, I'll try and draw him out as best as I can. Okay. Okay, so it's a very quick sketch, but hopefully you can see it's a seahorse. So, our garden outside is kind of a seaside beachy theme. We've got a lot of shells, a lot of... Um, netting stuff like that and we've just had a new fence put up so I wanted to pop him on one of our fence panels and if this goes well I might make more of these actually but so that's the concept I'm going with so I'll give you guys a few minutes to kind of roughly draw out um, your design on your pieces if you're following along at home um, if you don't really have a concept, that's fine. You can just do a pattern, you could do swirls, you could do circles, um, just anything really, it's up to you. Um, I like to do flowers sometimes when I'm doing this sort of thing. But So I'm going to do a little seahorse and then I've got a couple of bubbles as well. So I've just got a bubble up here and then a little one down there. Okay. And again, so for this, you could use um, obviously your plaster to attach your beads. Um, you could use PVA, uh, you could use a wood glue, um, anything that's strong really. Um, if you are gonna use PVA, I would suggest you use it neat. Don't mix any water with it. Um, especially if your gems are quite heavy or you're using pieces of tile, which are gonna be a bit heavier. Um, I would definitely recommend using some sort of plaster or something um, that's going to properly stick them to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I've got my jug of water here, and then I'm just going to put a little bit in here. 
Okay, like that. I'll just pop you over there a second. And then grab one of my paint brushes. I'm just gonna mix it round. So for the purposes of today, I am making it a little bit more watery than I would normally make it, just because I do not want it um, to dry and go hard too quickly because it's very humid in here as well. So I'm just gonna mix that up. It looks a bit like plaster soup. <laughs> so, there we go, okay. Right, so I'm just going to add a little bit more plaster to that, so, okay, make sure I mixed up all the chunks first, okay, so I'm just going to grab my little, uh, I've got a little pot of uh, dry plaster, so I'm just going to get my mix right before I try popping it on here, so if you'll excuse me, I'm just going to go grab that. So it pays to have friends in science departments. <laughs> so try not to inhale the dust. There we go. I'll just pop a little bit in there. It's kind of like talcum powder when it comes out. And there we go. That's a bit thicker. Okay. So when you're working with plaster, you do have to work quite quickly. Um, so already this is becoming quite thick. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a smidge more water in there. Okay. There we go. Just pick that up. Just try and get the balance right before I pop my gems on. I'll just move you out of the way, Mr. Polyfiller. So once you're happy with the consistency of your glue or your plaster or whatever it is you're using to affix your gems, I hope you guys can see this okay. I've kind of got them at a bit of an angle, but I will obviously um, have to take pictures afterwards because I won't be able to pick him up too much because stuff might start to move. So we've got to work very quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop plaster over where I plan to pop my gems. So I might actually use my smaller brush for this one. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to try and smooth it out a little bit. So I've got a little bit on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using all my, my little gems. And I'm going to use a mixture, I think. So I think we're going to make him a little bit more green than blue. So I'm just going to... Okay, I've done a little bit of a mix of turquoise and blue. Okay. So yeah, this is already starting to go quite hard, so I might have to mix up another batch before I finish here. Trying to get it towards the edges as much as possible. Okay, okay just go down the tail. Okay, 
So this one's going to be a little bit uh, quicker because obviously we're working against the plaster here. So what I might do is I might add a little bit more water if I do get stuck. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to stick a little bit of the craft glue that we had earlier on here just to help it. I'm just going to actually layer that straight over the top of the plaster just in case the plaster starts to dry. Okay. I'm trying to make sure I don't get plaster all over myself, but you can kind of see what I'm going for there. So. There we go. And you want your pieces to go right up to the edge of your design so that it forms the image that you're trying to design. Okay. okay. Oh, we've got a little loose one that wants to stay here, so you can go there for a minute. Okay. Just put a little bit more glue on his head. There we go. Lovely. Okay, so let's get some more green gems. So if you guys are uh, doing your own mosaics at home, please tell me what kind of designs you're making. And again, I would love to see um, what sort of things you guys make. And if this all goes well, um, I will do another one of these for you. So. that. I'm just going to use my big green ones I think for this bit. Okay. okay. Whoops, a daisy. They're all alive and escaping. There we go. Let's pop that one there, because I'm pretty sure that don't um, don't see horses have like a little head like spine. I'm pretty sure they do. I probably should have done a Google image search before I made this, but hey ho, it's fine. He can be our own special variety of seahorse. <laughs> It's going to look a little bit rough uh, for the minute until everything dries. I apologize, but again, I will post pictures afterwards so you guys can see how it should look and how it turned out. So, okay, okay, just trying to separate the green gems from the blue ones that I've got. go that's better so uh, it's easier for me to there we go that's that's a lot better I'm, I'm quite happy with that actually let's stick another one in there like that and of course if you're very very clever um, and you've probably worked your design out already you can use your different um, shades of your colors to do like tonal effects and shadowing and stuff like that um, but I just wanted a really pretty seahorse, so. <laughs> so he's gonna be my pretty seahorse. I guess it's like My Little Pony, but underwater. I don't know if that's a thing. Okay. So I don't know about you guys, but I could really do with an ice cream right about now. It is super warm. And there's nothing I like better in the summertime to do is um, I love to sit outside on a blanket with uh, a nice cold cider and an ice cream while I'm painting. So 
you know, yes, maybe I'm sad, <laughs> but that's what I like to do for fun. So, okay. So for his belly, I'll just lift him up so you can kind of see what I'm doing. There you go. So for his belly, I'm just doing a line of the light blue. Okay, so I think my plaster's starting to, yeah, go a little bit chunky now. So I'm just gonna use this last little bit here. And then I'll pop some water in that and uh, re-solidify it at some point. But that's fine, because we've got our craft glue here as well. So, okay. I love the sound these make. I think that would be good for an ASMR video, wouldn't it? Just me playing with beads for an hour. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Okay. It's just gonna be very generous with this glue here. There we go. Okay. I think for the bubbles, I'm gonna do a mixture of like the royal, I don't know if you can see that actually the dark blue and the light blue. So I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these out. I can guarantee after this live show is finished, I'm gonna find beads absolutely everywhere. I can see it now. I'll wake up tomorrow and there will be beads on the floor. <laughs> And I've got some really nice little turquoise ones as well, so I think I might use those for the bubble. So, uh, what is everybody doing on this nice Saturday afternoon? Are you guys outside watching this? Or are you indoors? Are you just chilling? Are you making stuff? Let me know. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing at the moment. So I've kind of got his belly done. Kind of looks like an alien. <laughs> Does it look like a seahorse? Do we think it looks like a seahorse? I think it's kind of getting there. So I need to give the seahorse a name. What do we think? Like Sally Seahorse? I don't know. <laughs> Sydney? Sydney Seahorse? That might be quite cool. Was there a seahorse in Finding Nemo? I can't remember. I think there was. Be to be honest, I haven't watched Finding Nemo in at least a year and a half, probably two years. So I do not remember if there was a seahorse in it or not, which is really bad because I'm a huge like Disney and Pixar fan. Um, pretty sure Finding Nemo was done by Pixar, wasn't it? Was it Pixar and Disney? I'm not sure. Okay. Just make sure I've got enough green beads for the back part. I did buy two packs just in case um, because on the website it said that they were uh, like a 90 gram packet. So I wanted to make sure that I had enough. Okay, so I'm just going to put some little royal blue ones down here, like that. I'm just going to stick the odd turquoise in. There we go. That looks quite good actually, I'm quite happy with that. How are you guys doing with your crafts? If you're still at the pom-pom making stage, that's absolutely fine. Carry on, keep making your pom-poms. Oh, there you go. It's quite nice actually, isn't it? It's quite nice. Okay. Yeah, my plaster is a bit more like a paste now. So, let me just pop that out like that. Trying to make sure I don't get plaster everywhere. Okay. So, 
So, um, sorry if any of you are uh, allergic to ice cream or anything like that, but let me know what your favorite ice cream flavor is. Mine is a toss up between um, coffee and probably uh, fish food by Ben and Jerry's or cookie dough. I think fish food might win it. Um, I mean, Ben and Jerry's have like hundreds of different flavors that I've not tried. I think some of them are exclusive to like America and other countries, but um, yeah, let me know what your favorites are because there might be some that I've never tried. Um, I am partial to if it's a really hot day and I don't want anything too sickly, maybe raspberry ripple. But I think my favorite to go for is probably coffee or cookie dough. I think. Um, somebody told me that the Ben and Jerry's caramel core ones are really nice. So I might have to try those at some point. But here in the UK, it's lovely and sunny and warm and definitely barbecue and eating ice cream weather. So. Okay, so I'm just working my way down his little tail at the moment, but he is quite cute. I think they have like a little, they have like a little fin at the back, don't they? Which I think I've forgotten to put on here. So I should really do a Google search, shouldn't I, for what seahorses look like? But I'm pretty sure because that's how they move, isn't it, with their little, their little fins. So I think I'm going to make the fin. Like blue, maybe. So let's just stick those out. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go wash up after this, I think, because this is very messy. Let's stick you there. Well, it doesn't matter too much that it's going outside of the wood. I actually quite like that. So let's stick some in there like that. Go. Okay, so I'm going to grab my phone and do a quick search. So let's see, what do seahorses look like? Let's have a little look. Seahorses, seahorses. Do male and female ones look different to each other, do you think? Um, seahorse. Okay. Oh wow, there's so many different varieties of seahorse. So that's the first image that came up. So I'm kind of close. He doesn't have as long a, I think he needs a longer longer snout part though but I'm close so not bad for somebody who hasn't really looked into what seahorses look like oh there's some really beautiful ones oh okay that's a cute picture so let's make his snout a little bit longer there we go and then add another couple of green ones, I think. Yeah, let's go for green. Stick those in there like that. There we go. Does that does that look weird? I look like a seahorse. A little bit. Um, I might go for a smaller one at the top because that looks a bit odd to me. There we go. That looks better, I think. So let's go with that. And then I'm just going to put those there. There we go. And then one in there like that. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, so I just need to finish off his fin. He's a little fin. The only thing that I know about seahorses oh, is that I believe it's the male that carries the babies. Quote me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Good old daddy seahorse to the rescue. Okay. So I've still got quite a few greeny ones in there. So I'm just gonna pop that on there like that and then mix some of my lighter ones in as well. This is actually really therapeutic. I don't know about you guys, but I'm actually quite enjoying this. Um, there we go. But yeah, let me know um, if you guys are enjoying this and I will do it again, as, you know. I will do another live stream because this has actually been really fun for me too, even though it has been very messy. So, okay, I'm just gonna pop one in there. So I do actually have a couple of really tiny clear ones which you probably can't see from there but I'll do you a close-up in a little bit. So just put a couple of those in. Okay. Add my green ones. might actually put this dark one in as his eye, I think. So Mr. Seahorse can see. He will be a <laughs> seeing horse. That's a terrible joke. Don't laugh at that. <laughs> Does that work? That's uh, that one in there. I think that kind of works. We think he he can now see. <laughs> okay. So um, some of the other crafts I was going to do this afternoon, um, which I'm not sure if I'll get time today. But what I might do is if I do a second live stream, I might add those and do those ones first on the next one. Um, something that I was looking forward to making was the wooden wind chimes and I'll show you after I've done this um, but basically uh, I ordered some beads from Hobbycraft and unfortunately they were out of stock of a lot of stuff so the bag that I got to use wasn't exactly the biggest so I don't think I've got enough beads to do the wind chimes with today which is a little bit upsetting because obviously I did want to do those ones today for you guys um, but if I do manage to get some more beads um, it might be a future video that I do so if I don't end up doing some of the crafts today don't worry um, they'll either be in a, a regular video of mine or uh, they'll be in the next live stream so there's no worry about that I won't I won't forget those so we're coming to the end of his tail now and I believe they're quite curly aren't they looking at them they do sort of a, a spiral looking thing so let's just stick you guys there I'm trying to make sure I don't grab the really dark blue ones because that's not what I want I want some of the green ones now to finish the tail off I'm trying to give it quite a big, quite a big curl around. So let's just stick those to the outer side. Like that. And what I'm going to actually do is, let's come back in with our 
plaster and glue and we're going to add a little bit more of a curl to the tail so it really curls round and inwards like that and use some of the dinky gems to fill it in okay. oh, I'm going to put that dark blue back There we go. So it's a little bit rough at the moment, but once everything dries, how cool is that? I think he looks super cute. I'm really pleased with that. Um, so I'm just gonna do the bubbles at the top and the bottom now, and then I will leave him to dry. And then later on, I will probably put some uh, filler over just to sort of um, fill in the gaps a little bit and to seal it. So I'm going to pop my green ones back there because I'm going to want purely blue for this next bit. Just tidy up as we go. Okay, so for the next bit, just bring him down a little bit. And I'm just going to use PVA glue for these because they're quite small, these pieces. I don't have to worry too much. On there and on there I feel is good. Sort of balance it out a little bit. And then it's just a case of grab every bead and fill in my bubbles. This would be a really cute project for a bathroom, actually. Just thinking about it. Ooh, I've got a runaway bead. There we go. Okay. And that one in there. I'm trying to make sure it's still circular. Let's pop you in there. There we go. And some dark blue ones. I'll just stick you at the bottom. Okay. There we go. So I can put that in there. So I need some really tiny ones now, just to go in between the gaps. Okay. So I need a really little one. Ah, there we go. You will do perfectly fine. Okay. So my little bubble. <laughs> it looks like the eye of Sauron for some reason on on camera but I'll give you guys a close-up when I've finished him. So again I'm just gonna grab my blue ones and just pop those on there like that. Okay. those in there like that there we go okay Ooh, just wiggle them into place and then once this is dry I will probably put a coat of um, poly filler and then mod podge over the top just to give it a waterproof seal so that these beads don't go nowhere. Okay. Oh. There we go. Just push those in there and then you can go there. Okay. Don't know if you how well you can see that. He's pretty cute. I'm going to do one more bubble down here and then he is complete. So let's just pop a bubble, ha, pop a bubble in there, like so. I'm 
I'm gonna have so many gems left over. <laughs> I could probably rhinestone an entire cat suit with these. outside there's so many of them um, I think after the streams finished I'm probably gonna go and hang out in my garden before the Sun goes down <laughs> and I might have a barbecue tomorrow who knows we will see I will probably be finishing off and varnishing some of these crafts, who knows, but okay. there we go. Just pop a couple of little ones in there just to fill in that gap. And you in there, I think. Are you going? There we go. So that is our finished mosaic for the time being. Like I said, I'm gonna let everything dry and then he can be varnished, what have you, and just sit in the garden. So I'm really happy with that, he's super cute. I might do uh, like a starfish one and like a mini fish one. Yeah, maybe a whole lot of sea creatures. <laughs> who knows? So, hello to everybody who's just joined the chat. Um, so we are on our third craft at the moment. Um, just finished my little seahorse mosaic. Um, but yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. And they're not too bored on this Saturday afternoon. So I'm gonna do a quick little clear up because my hands are now covered in clay and plaster and all sorts. So I'm just gonna do a little quick clean up. So let's just pop you guys down there. Okay. And then, yeah, we'll get rid of those for the time being. Somewhere around here, I've got some wipes. <laughs> oh, they're just over there, so. All good. We'll just have a little clear away of some of this bits and bobs. I'm pretty sure I've still got some gems on the table somewhere, but okay. So I don't don't need my phone for reference images anymore. Uh, so I am going to go and wash my hands and. I will be right back guys, okay? So, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Okay, so all nice and clean. So I'm just gonna have a little have a little look at the list that I made because I am super organized. So we've done our mosaic, we've done our Easter wreaths, and we've done our um, pom poms. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna make um, some masking tape flowers. So grab 
masking tape because I've got two rolls. One of them is a bit dodgy and the other one is perfectly fine and I can never remember which one is the better one. So we're gonna wing it. Okay. So I'm gonna have to move a bit closer for this one. Okay, so masking tape flowers, um, for me, they're super easy. I've made them hundreds of times and I actually, um, first I made them when I was at university. I made probably about 100, 120 and I covered an entire huge canvas in them. So, so what I'm gonna do is, if you guys wanna follow along at home, grab your masking tape or whatever you've got to hand. Um, masking tape is better for this because it's paper-like and it's not quite as sticky as obviously regular tape is. Um, but as I said earlier, if you want to try these at home but you don't have the materials available, that's perfectly fine. What you can do is obviously when I upload this to YouTube as its own video, you guys can watch it back and try it yourself at home. So. What I'm going to do to start is just make a little stem and this is going to be to hold our flower onto. You can cut it off later but it's just more to make things a bit easier. So we're going to make a little shape. I think that one is the worst one so let's try this one. Okay so that one is the better one. <laughs> okay, so not being particularly neat, just grab the end of that, if I can get the end of it, there we go, just pull it very slowly and then I'm just going to add to it, basically it gives us something to hold on to when we're making our flower. If you're following along at home, have you got your your little stem part? I love the sound of masking tape. It's really satisfying. <laughs> I might do that in my next art sounds video, who knows? So you've got your little your little stem. Now the tip to doing uh, masking tape flowers is a really easy three-fold step. So I'm going to do a really big piece to show an example so you guys can get it. So sticky side facing away from you, okay? You're going to fold this corner in on itself. So, okay, so you folded it in, so you've got that kind of angle there. Then you're going to do the same again with this side. So fold that in on itself, it was a bit sticky there. So you've got this kind of like shape here. And then with your sticky pieces, you're going to wrap them around your main structure. And that's gonna be the start of your flower. So you've got your kind of inside part. And it's literally just rinse and repeat. So I'll do it again so you guys can see. So again, sticky side facing away from you. Fold your corner down. And if you want, you can leave a bit more of a gap, um, depending on how big you want your petal to be. But I always start small and then go wider. So fold in again, and you've got your little tab. And then literally pinch the bottom. And you'll start to see a flower. I tell you what, I will do a few of them because the lighting here is quite bad. I'll do a few of them and then I'll come around the table and show you guys a bit closer. Um, so I need to keep picking that one up. Okay. So again, piece of tape, sticky side to walk away from you. Hold your two corners down and then pinch the bottom. Now, 
I don't have any here because I couldn't get it in time, unfortunately. But obviously, if you don't want to have plain white roses or white flowers, um, I would advise using um, spray paint. That's what I was going to say. I would advise spray painting them because spray paint is obviously a more of a dry product. Whereas if you try to paint them with like regular acrylic or like a watercolor, it's just going to soak into the paper and make it really soggy and you don't want that. So this is the same technique that I used for making um, my ribbon roses, which I have got them to the side. So in a minute, I might just go grab those. If you guys haven't seen um, my ribbon rose video, then I'll go and grab them and show you basically what they look like. But um, it's still up on YouTube, I believe. You can go check it out. Okay. So again, sticky side away, put your tabs down and then just pinch the bottom and then just kind of, there we go. So it's kind of getting there and you basically just layer and layer it up until you get the desired effect that you want. So now I'm coming to the more like outer part of the rose. I'm gonna leave a bigger gap between my tabs. So I'm just gonna fold that down so it's a bit more of a bridge looking thing, if that makes sense. And I'm just gonna put that this side, like so. I'll do a couple more and then I will show you up close. So, <laughs> for some reason this makes me think of the dragon egg that you made. Oh my word, the dragon egg. That feels like so long ago now. I need to, I need to do another one of those videos actually. Um, because I don't know how long you guys have been watching my videos, but there's quite a few of my old ones that I was looking back on the other day and thinking, oh my God, they were awful. <laughs> um, not 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 awful, but um, I think I might need to redo some of them, do some more updated versions um, with a better camera, with my HD stuff now. Um, it's very weird watching your old content. So yeah, I might have to do a then and now video series. That could be a good thing to do, couldn't it? bit of masking tape is not working with me but yeah then then and now the difference I mean the biggest difference has been my 